In the next eight minutes, you're going to learn 20 tricks and techniques that will make your design work in Photoshop so much better, like way better. And at the same time, we're creating a delicious icy text effect where everything, including the text, is still fully editable. So we're now in Photoshop, and first of all, let's create a new document. Let's go with 4K for the size, 300 for the DPI so it's high quality, and then set the background to black. Now using the type tool, I'm going to click anywhere and type some text. And of course we can't see anything because the text is black. So let's select that and change it to white. And you can now see the text, which was inspired by a cold morning when I was freezing my ass off. Next, let's open up the character properties and then adjust the value for the tracking. And this will adjust the spacing between all of the letters. Next, let's adjust something called leading. And now you can see it's adjusting the spacing between the lines. Now use free transform, which is command or control T, and then scale this up holding shift. Next, press command or control A to select all, and then align this to the center of the canvas. Now deselect that selection. Okay, let's hide this panel and select the background layer and press delete or backspace. Then from the very bottom of the layers panel, we're going to add a solid color adjustment layer. And here you can pick any color, but black is just fine. And of course it's on top of our text, which is no good. So let's drag that underneath. Now select all of the letters, and then from the character panel, we're going to pick a font. This can be any font you like, and you can change this later. But for now, I'm going to use a heavy version of Visby. And also check that your text is aligned to the center. This step is really important. Right, now let's close this panel down. And we're going to right click the text and convert this to a smart object. Now for the next bit, I use some stock assets. And remember, there is some similar... The, 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 Remember there are some similar stock assets linked below if you'd like to follow along. Not sure what happened there, a slight malfunction. But anyway, let's open up these assets in Photoshop. First up is a slab of ice. And if we select any of the selection tools, we get these options up here. So I can enhance the edge and choose one of two ways to make a selection and click select subject. And you can see it's done a pretty decent job. And I can now add a layer mask, give the layer a name, ice. And then we're going to convert this layer to a smart object as well. Now we're going to right click this layer, select duplicate, and then select our main document, which is untitled one and click OK. We can now close this down and it's duplicated that layer into the main document. Right, let's zoom out a bit for this next step and select free transform. And for this step, it's time to adjust the size, position and rotation of the ice so that it intentionally covers part of the text. So let's go and pop this over here, something like that. Now duplicate the layer. And then we'll drag this over to the right hand side and try and mix this up a little bit because we are using the same ice image after all. So let's try and make them look a bit different. Right, I think that's looking pretty good. And this next bit is rather fun. So with one of the ice layers selected, go to filter and select liquify. And you can turn on show backdrop if it makes it easier to see what you're doing. And at the top of the panel, you can adjust the brush size. And we're now going to use this tool to sculpt the ice into an interesting shape. We're going to add a few more curves and you can even add some jaggedy bits if you like. Basically, you get to sculpt the ice in any way that you choose. And when you're happy, click OK. And let's just reposition this so it definitely covers the text. And now we've got to do exactly the same for the other ice layer. So let's take a moment to do that and I'll see you in a sec. Right, looking good. Next, select both ice layers and convert these to a smart object. It's like Iceception. Ice, Iceception, no? Anyway, double click the smart object to go inside and let's add another adjustment layer, this time selecting hue and saturation. And if we drag this slider to the left, the image becomes completely desaturated with no color whatsoever. Now let's close the document down, making sure we select save. And those changes will be updated in the main document. Right, now let's hold down command or control and click on the ice layer. This will make a selection of the ice, select the layer with the text on it, and then add a mask. And it disappears, which uh, isn't ideal. But with the mask selected, we can invert this and it comes back. And if I hide the ice layer, this is how it looks. And you can see that I unlinked the layer from the mask and you'll see why this is important in a minute. Now let's reselect the layer itself and then go to filter, distort and select displace. Let's crank up the values to make this really interesting and then click OK. And to add a displacement map, we need to use a PSD file. And fortunately, I have one prepared here. And as you can see, it uses that PSD file to displace the text, which is a great way for creating grungy text effects without using any brushes. Right, now let's go to filter down to blur 
and select Gaussian Blur. Let's go with a nice small value of 1 and then again duplicate this layer. Now for one of these we're going to select the mask and invert it and by inverting it on its own it should look like this. Right, let's turn the ice layer back on and then with it selected let's change the blending mode to screen. Now all of these smart filters you can double click them and then go and edit them or reapply them. So let's change this one to 100 and let's select that same PSD file. And what we're doing is increasing the displacement only for the text covered by the ice. Let's also increase the blur value so the text under the ice is slightly harder to see. And let's drag the blur underneath as well because the order of these filters does matter. Right, let's go and add some noise. And then change this to Gaussian and monochromatic and you can play around with the slider to adjust the value. And as you zoom the slider around, you can see how this filter changes the text under the ice. Again, let's drag this underneath the displacement filter. And if you want your ice to be less pronounced, what you can do is reduce the opacity as well. So I'm going to bring this down about 20%. Obviously not too much because as you can see, it looks awful. So something like that looks about right. And another nifty trick is to add a brightness and contrast adjustment layer. And for this design specifically, bring the brightness down and then crank up the contrast. Let's play around with that a little bit more. Something like that looks good. And if we hold down Alt or Option and click between the layers, we can add this as a clipping mask so it only affects the layer directly below. Right, now let's go and bring this down just a little bit more. There we go. And if we turn on all of the layers, you can see what we've done. We have the two text layers, one isn't under the ice and one is under the ice. And both of these have slightly different effects. So the text is interacting with the ice in a realistic way. And because we unlinked the mask earlier, we can now move the text around because a higher displacement value can throw the text off. So let's just put it back in the right position. And because the mask is unlinked, it will stay in the same place, which means that if we select both text layers and adjust the size and position, the effects will move around with it. And once you're happy, you press return to apply those changes. And remember, because they're all smart filters, we can double click any one of these effects and adjust the values until we get it looking just right. Right, let's switch over to the PSD that I used for the displacement, select all and then copy merged. Now select your top layer and paste this in. And let's call this dust. And then once again, change the blending mode to screen. This will blend this over the entire design. And just like before, we can bring down the opacity and this will make the dust a bit more subtle. Now, just a quick side note, you can double click the color fill there we made at the beginning and you can change the color if you want. Uh, I think I think I'll stick with black. Something else we can also do is select that top layer and then add a levels adjustment layer. And we can use this to adjust the shadows, midtones and highlights in one fell swoop. Or we can just bring up the blacks, for example, which gives it a slightly faded, washed out look. Now, the great thing about all these smart objects is I can double click the one for the text and then go to image canvas size. Let's make this value nice and big. And then if I click OK, it adds a ton of space top and bottom space that we can now use to actually change the text itself or the font. And if we didn't increase the canvas size, it would get cut off when we save it and go back to our document. And yes, I am crackers. And if we undo that, save and close, you can see it goes back to I am frozen. Now, lastly, I'm going to open up a skull graphic. I'm just going to open this in Illustrator, select the black skull and copy this, and then reopen the smart object I closed down because I'm a total plonker, and then paste this in as a smart object. And this is really just a bit of icing on the cake, but what I'm going to do is place the skull in the middle of the letter O. So let's pop this fella in the middle, and then let's add a new layer. Make sure this layer is underneath the skull, select the brush tool and then select white. Now let's rather lazily just fill in the middle of the letter O. There we go, job done, save and close and back to the main document. And after all that, this is the final design. And if you enjoyed this and would like some more Photoshop goodness, I've got another video right here that is an absolute banger. But as always, take care and I'll see you next time.